Hi there, and welcome to a new episode on TypeScript Design Patterns. And in this module, we'll discuss the bridge pattern. When we look at the definition, it states that it decouples an abstraction from its implementation so that the two can vary independently. And um, it looks a lot like the adapter pattern or even the uh, facade. There is a difference, however, between these patterns and uh, where the facade actually allows us to call a single method that will then be handed out to several other classes and several other methods to return a single result. So the facade is actually simplifying a call to multiple objects in a workflow. And uh, uh, the bridge pattern does not. The adapter pattern is there to really change how the uh, interface looks for your client application, but it's all about external classes that you would like to have a different interface for. So the bridge pattern, however, is for while you're developing your application, you might have some interfaces in there that are not final yet. However, the functionality of your application is already known. So what you can then do is you create a bridge which contains the functionality that's needed by your application. So it has the methods to actually make sure that your application can do what it needs to do. The interfaces that, are, for example, store data to the backend or read from the backend might still be subject to change. So if as long as your code just calls the bridge, your code will continue to work. And if anything changes to the interfaces, all you need to change is your bridge and not the rest of your code. It also ensures that these classes that implement this interface can be, uh, are interchangeable within your application. So you can create several classes that implement the interface. And as long as you just come text these clauses through your bridge, the bridge will make sure that all keeps working. So it's also very good for testing, test-driven development. So uh, let's head over to our Visual Studio solution and uh, let's look at what we've got here. So in this case, I have a record and a contact record. This might have well been interfaces, but in this uh, example, we yeah, think, let's think of those as our models, our, our data models. So we have a record model and a contact record model. Okay. Then we also have a I repository interface and an I contact repository interface. These interfaces have, for example, uh, defined that they need a create method, a read method, an exist method, and an update method. These interfaces, however, might still be subject to change. So anything within that interface might still be changed while we are developing our application. It would be very difficult, however, if we would use these interfaces throughout our application and later on, we might need a change. Then we need to change every location or application where we call this interface. So what you can do is you can create a bridge and the bridge is a separate interface or a separate class that just contains the methods your application needs to fulfill uh, its functionality. So what we got here, our bridge, we have a create or update, a read and a delete method. Those are the actual three methods I need. How this bridge will forward those to the uh, interfaces, the I records of I repository or I contact repository, is not of interest for our the rest of our application. So our bridge just contains the creator update, read, and delete method. Our contact bridge is a refined bridge, which also has a read by name method, and eventually it will forward it in this case to a uh, I contact repository which also has a method read by name so if our interface for example would need to change to read all by name because we also have a, a different method like read by name and then returns a single item
we of course need to change the repositories that actually need to implement this interface. But our bridge, the read by name method would still be the same. So our actual code over here would just continue to work. Okay, so this interface might still be subject to change, and because of that, we uh, don't want to call these interfaces directly. We use the bridge to fetch the data for us that we functionally need in our application. So when we continue over here in our code, it also allows for easily testing our application because we might change the actual repository we will pass it to our bridge to indeed get the data so here i have an example where we say i have a variable called test and if test is true we set the contact repository to a new test contact repository when it's false we set our contact repository to a production contact repository we then create a new bridge and we pass it the contact repository and our code here in the application, we say, okay, let's get a record by reading it. So record bridge read where ID is one, and we get return the record, and we say record display. Then we use a defined bridge. We need to, for example, get something by name. So we say, okay, let's create our new contact bridge, pass the same contact repository, whether it's test or production, and our code then calls contact bridge read by name. We then display that one. Then we have a change, we change the contact name to Norbert Chiffai. Then we call contact bridge create or update. There's no, in our, the rest of our application, we do not have any reference to the interfaces and in that way the interfaces can still be subject to change. And that is how you use the bridge pattern.